Boom! What is up, my chemistry people? Who is ready for a thriller of a free response practice? A sample of C2H4 gas is placed in a previously evacuated, rigid 2.0 liter container and heated from 300 Kelvin to 450 Kelvin. The pressure of the sample is measured and plotted in the graph below. Ooh, increase of pressure. Part A. Describe two reasons why the pressure changes as the temperature of the C2H4 gas increases. Your descriptions must be in terms of what occurs at the molecular level. Molecular level. All right, take a look at this thriller of an animation. Here is our 2.0 liter rigid container. Our C2H4 gas bouncing around inside. 300 Kelvin. Note the current pressure. Observe. Heat em up, speed em up. All right, now I've increased the temperature to give you a look at the molecular view of what is going on. Notice our pressure has increased. Observe. As the temperature increases, the average speed of the molecules increases and the molecules collide more frequently with the container walls, thus increasing pressure. Feeling great, but don't forget, we need two reasons, two reasons. Our first, we're colliding more frequently due to the increased average speed. As the temperature increases, the average kinetic energy of the molecules increases and the molecules strike the walls of the container with greater force thus increasing pressure boom two one two great reasons why the pressure changes as the temperature increases great formula reference that's on your formula chart is this one kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass times the velocity squared. Two points. C2H4 reacts readily with HCl to produce C2H5Cl as represented in the following equation. Boom! Part B. When HCl is injected into the container of C2H4 at 450 Kelvin, the total pressure increases. Then, as the reaction proceeds at 450 Kelvin, the total pressure decreases. Explain this decrease in total pressure in terms of what occurs at the molecular level. Molecular. The decrease in pressure after the initial increase is due to the production of fewer gas molecules than initially present. Notice in the chemical equation that for every two moles of gas molecules that we have initially as reactants, we're only forming one mole of gas product. As I take a look at this thrilling image, obviously it's scaled down from moles to individual molecules. Recognize that I have two molecules of reactant gas particles. Boom! Banging around into the walls before the reaction, accounting for the initial increase in pressure. But after, I have just one. Boom! Less collisions with the sides of the container. When fewer gas molecules are present, there are fewer collisions with the container walls, thus decreasing the pressure. Boom! One point. It is proposed that the formation of C2H5Cl proceeds via the following two-step reaction mechanism. Boom! Part C. Write the rate law for the reaction that is consistent with the reaction mechanism above. What? I have no experimental data. How am I supposed to write the rate law for a reaction without experimental data? Comparing changes in concentrations to changes in rates. Remember that when you're given the reaction mechanism, you can use the stoichiometry in the rate determining step or the slow step to write your rate law. Remember that it's the slow step in the mechanism that determines the rate for the overall reaction. So if we can determine the rate law for the slow step, then we know the rate law for the overall reaction as well. Rate is equal to our rate constant times the concentration of C2H4 to the first order. Because 
I recognize that my rate determining step is the first step in this mechanism and the coefficient in this elementary rate determining step is one times concentration of HCl to the first order. Once again, I look at the coefficient in the elementary rate determining step. Again, you're only able to write a rate law without experimental data when you are given a reaction mechanism and have identified the rate determining step or the slow step within that mechanism. Without a mechanism and without experimental data, you won't be able to write a rate law. Part D, identify an intermediate in the reaction mechanism above. As I study my mechanism, recall that an intermediate is produced in an early step and consumed in a later step. Produced in an early step and consumed in a later step. So we actually have two possible answers here. It says identify an intermediate, which implies just identifying one. I've included both of them here in my answer, but recognize that if you're only asked for one, play it safe and throw down just the one answer that you know for sure could be an intermediate. In this case, it's pretty clear for both of them, I think, but I'm a genius. Part E, using the axes provided below, draw a curve that shows the energy changes that occur during the progress of the reaction. The curve should illustrate both the proposed two-step mechanism and the enthalpy change of the reaction. Whoop. All right, as I take a look at my mechanism, I have two steps, which indicates that as I draw my energy profile, it's gonna require two humps, one for each step. Also important to recognize that the reaction is exothermic, indicated by a negative enthalpy change for the reaction provided earlier in the problem. So the potential energy of my products is gonna be lower than the potential energy of my reactants, because some of the energy has been given off in the form of heat. Reactants, step one. Step two, products. All right, as you take a look at this reaction profile, recognize first that because it's exothermic, my products need to be lower on the energy profile than my reactants, indicating that heat has been given off. We also need to reflect the two-step process by having these two humps in the curve, in the profile. Notice that I made the first hump higher than the second hump. Why did I do that? Recognize that the first step is the slow step or the rate determining step and therefore is gonna have a higher activation energy than the subsequent step. Finally, part F. On the diagram above, clearly indicate the activation energy for the rate determining step in the reaction. All right, here are my reactants, my activation energy or the energy that I need to put in in order for the reaction to begin to proceed is indicated here by the dotted line. I'm gonna label this activation energy. E sub A. Okay, now that was a fun free response. We got to draw, show off our art skills. What more could you ask for? Have a fantastic day. Boom!